Hello and welcome to an episode of Spatial Data Discovery. Today we will be looking into the Git workflow. All right, so if you've already cloned your two repositories to your computer, we can start to look into how we're going to interact with those on your end. So if we come up here uh, to the spatialdatadiscovery.github.io website and click on the GitHub link in the top right hand corner, this will take us to the website repository, back up to our organizational site, and find our semester repository, and find the issues, and our first sandbox challenge. So scroll down in the sandbox challenge, and you will see the Git workflow that we are going to be using. So we have our repositories folder, we have our semester repository cloned, and we've updated our git configs. And now we want to do some changes on our end and then push them to the repository so that other people can see our work. Now before we go in there, I, I think a good first step is to set up an environment variable so that it's easier to navigate because while the path to the repositories is, is might not be too long sometimes it's just better to save keystrokes so in windows if you go down to the windows start key and type in env for environments you'll see that there are environment variables for your accounts or for the system if you go to edit the environment variables for your account we'll see that we can add a new variable name and I'll call this one repos and I want to put in the path which if you don't remember you can always come to your repositories paste it in hit OK and then hit OK. And then if you go to the command prompt, you will now be able to use the percent keys around your variable and use the CD to shortcut having to type in the whole path. And we'll see that that puts us right outside the SDD drive and if I look inside the SDD drive, there are my two drives for my two repositories. And if I go into the directory AY2021.1, which is our semester directory, we'll see that we have all of the files there that we expect to find here, which are the same files that you'll see here. Okay, so the sandbox challenge is to add your name to the contributors document. So you'll find that there is a document called Contributors. Uh, it is a plain text file, which means you can open it with Notepad, Atom Text Editor, or other text editors if you have one. Uh, Notepad is the built-in one, so that's the one we'll just take a quick look using. And we'll see that a lot of us have already signed up. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to edit my name and I'll take out my middle initial and come up to file and save. So I've added my name and we see that the edit time has changed and if we come over here to our classic git status we'll see that there is a modification now to our text file. So the Git workflow is to always check for any changes on the remote repository first. So we do a Git pull and we make sure that there are no changes and there aren't any. Then we have our modified file. So I can add, I can add it using the actual name of the file or because it is a modified file, I can do the dash U for shorthand all unstaged files. Then if I look at the get status, we'll see that it has gone from red to green and it says that there are changes not staged to changes to be committed. So we have staged our file for committing. 
we haven't yet made a commit, so I'm gonna do a git commit dash m and then type in a message. So what did I do? So edits to my name in contribs, contributors. And then hit enter and you'll see that you now have a commit number and it has the file, the number of files changed, the number of insertions and deletions. And if you do a git status again, you'll see that you are now ahead of the origin master by one commit. So this means that the remote repository is behind you. So every time a commit is made, the history kind of moves forward one step. So you are always sort of either sort of at parity behind or in front of the remote repository. So if you have made multiple commits and you haven't pushed yet, it'll tell you how many commits you are ahead. If you're behind, it doesn't tell you, which is why you have to do a git pull. And then if you git pull and there says that you're already up to date, then you know that there you are at the same sort of commit level as the remote repository. Uh, so we've gone through editing or pulling, editing, adding for stage, and then committing so that we now have a record in the history. And then now we need to send that to the remote repository, which you do by doing a git push. And once it goes through, you'll be able to come to the uh, remote repository, click on the contributors. You'll see that your edit tag is the last message. It tells you how long ago it's been. And you'll see that your edits are now showing up on the remote repository. And the second part of the sandbox challenge is to create a new file. So we come into the sandbox challenge. We come in here and create a new text document and it's going to be sandbox challenge one part a and will be dt woods and not txt but dot pi yes and then i can just open this with adam and it says prints two numbers okay print one, print two. Nothing incredibly fancy there. You can always test to make sure your file works. So if you look to see you are in the sandbox file, your, your file is there, DIR to check where you are, and you are in the sandbox folder. You can check to see if your file's there, and you can do a Python SB1 a DT Woods, and there it does, prints the one and the two. All right, now if we do a git status here, we see that we have an untracked file. So we have a file that exists on our local machine that does not exist in the staging or in the commit history of the, the remote repository. And you can add new files to the um, to the files that are being tracked by simply doing a git add and then adding in your file name. If you do a git status again, you'll see that it now says new file in green and it says changes to be committed. And you can make multiple additions to all go into the same commit if you, if you so choose. It's not just one commit for one file and one add at a time. So here we can do a git commit and add my script to the sandbox. And once we commit, you'll see that you get a number 
your message and the number of files, insertions, and a create mode because we now have a new file. So get status again, you see that you are up one. We can check to see if there are any updates on the remote repository and then I can push. And if we go back to the remote repository, we should see in the sandbox our file and our commit message. So that's sort of the basic rundown of the Git workflow. We want to come into our repository and from whichever folder you're in, it doesn't have to be the parent folder, but it needs to be somewhere inside the semester folder. You can do git status and then you can do git pull and you can make your edits somewhere else. So you can use Atom or Notepad uh, on Mac. You can use text edit or other text editors. Uh, use your favorite IDE for doing all of your coding and then come back, add your file, add any, un any edits that you've made, give it a commit message, and then push it to the repository. Now, we have an issue here called Sandbox Challenge 1. Now, notice that the issue here has a number one at the end. I know there's a, there's a hash one here, but the hash one at the very end is actually a special numbering system for issues. And one of the nice things about Git is our ability to reference our Git commits to specific issues. So let's come back into here, and I'm going to come in and edit my prints. So I don't want to print one and two, I want to print three and four. Make a save, and we should see here that we now have a modified file. I can pull to make sure there aren't any changes. I'm going to add dash u, which is the shortcut, check the status. We see that we have a modified file. And I'm going to commit message. And this time, instead of just typing in a message, I'm going to type in a message and then reference this issue. So modified my file addresses hash one. Now, the hashing has got a special significance in commit messages. Whenever it gets received by the remote repository, it will then put this git, it will check the message, and if it has a hash number, and that hash number matches a hash number on an issue, it's going to put it into the comment section in the issues. And it's a very nice way of organizing commits that are specifically addressing issues. So here I'm going to modify my file and it addresses one. Then I can push it to the repository. And what we should find here is it now shows up in my sandbox challenge issue. So anytime you create an issue that has a particular question, other people can then make changes for you that address the problem and then when they commit and push to the repository they can tag your issue so that you can just scroll down and say okay here is a particular issue there's the commit you can click the commit and you can see exactly the changes that were made that somebody did to sort of help you out on your issue and that's sort of the working with issues and github and we're going to be using issues in this class as a way of communicating things for addressing for things like reworking problems and sandbox challenges. So be on the lookout for those. And you yourself can create your own issues. And we can then make changes on the repository and send them and commit them and tag your issues to show you, okay, you've now received an update. And whenever you create an issue and somebody pushes, depending on your settings in GitHub, you will get an email that lets you know that somebody has sent in a new commit 
And then you can go and look and see, okay, I got a new commit, it, it tags my issue, and then you can go and look to see what's changed. So that's the, sort of the Git workflow. And if you have questions, uh, create an issue, uh, raise a question, use the discussion board, whatever you need to do. Uh, and then we will catch you on the next episode. Thanks for listening.